All right, Jay Wayne, you're on the clock with the 1-1 for uh, old Brian Penyak's team. Again, this is a little home league action. So uh, he's uh, the Sandusky Niners is the official squad name. It's a bad name. Terrible so, name. who's it going to be? You going Harry, Sanders? <laughs> I can't think of Harry without being like... Harry! <laughs> uh, I'm Montgomery. Gonna take, I think I'll take... Mm, that's what I'm taking. A nah. fresh, fresh crack? That was a good one. That was a good one. That, that was, was a strong, good, good crack. That was crispy clean. Crispy clean. And that's what I'm going to take number one. I'm not going to tell you who my team is. It's a pretty decent team in this league that we're that we're you know mocking up here. You get the first overall pick by winning the loser bowl, basically. Yep. And advancing each week, so it's kind of a bummer because it's usually a better team that thrive that's thriving at the end of the year that that gets that number one instead of the overall instead of the worst team in the league. But it's it's a cool caveat keeps you keeps you interested at the end of the year. I'm going Josh Jacobs. Let's, All right. Let's be real. Come on. Uh, this is a running back show. Where we could be called that if we wanted to be, uh, and I just I don't see any reason not to take Josh Jacobs. Uh, he's gonna have all the opportunity in the world. I believe. I love the player. I think he's got obviously the prototypical size and the smooth and fluidness. I think you can make an excuse for his low attempt total. He played on a broken ankle, so he says. Uh, his footwork is outstanding. That was in 17, right? So he missed a lot of 17. Uh, he can string moves together. He's got amazing balance. The pad level is probably the best in the class. He's a violent runner, but smooth at the same time. He can he can finish with power drink. Uh, he just does everything. He's like a he's got a force field with his offhand. He's thwarting you. He's pushing off you. He's stiff arming you. It's just really hard to get this guy down. I think he's got some long speed. I think it builds. It's faster than what his 40 was, I believe, at, at, at his pro day. And he was kind of nursing an injury, which that's kind of one of the knocks on him. But, I mean, I love him in the passing game. I think both, patch, passing, cat, both pass catching and pass protection is, is top notch. And I think, like I said, off the rip, he's going to get plenty of opportunity. He plays with a chip on his shoulder ever since coming out of high school. And uh, yeah, I don't see any reason why you don't take him number one. Yeah, good. Regardless of team, good story about Josh Jacobs, how how he came to be, and and you know what he's gone through, and then uh, putting his own highlight tape on Twitter. Um, pretty crazy, pretty crazy how all that went down. Um, yeah. Uh, and then Saban came knocking and said, "You know what? We'll uh, we'll take you." Right. No one had really given him an offer, and Saban's like, "Well, what's wrong with him? Because everything on tape looks great." Right. And. So they gave him an offer, and Oklahoma came coming, coming late. Yeah, and then he uh, was like, "Nah, I'm good." Well, with the with the first guys who offered him, and how could you not go with Bama? This guy was uh, pretty fun to watch. And again, you know, you can you could knock him for, you know, maybe lack of production a little bit, but it's what kind of what Alabama does. There's always at least two guys in the fold, and there happened to be kind of three uh, once uh, the other Harris came came to be this year. Uh, for the for the Crimson Tide here and and like you said he did play through some injuries but this he's a very good player he's got everything you want people were a little offended by the slow forty time at the at the pro day like you said but I think this is offended <laughs> they, they were people do get offended easily. they they do such jerks um first first running first and only running back off the board in, in the first round so you got to like that draft um, capital. And then, you know, he goes over to the Raiders with Mayock and Gruden, and, and this is seemingly kind of what Gruden wants and what he's always kind of hung his hat on. He likes to design offenses and that that type of stuff, but he also wants a mainstay back back there who, you know, can do a little bit of everything, and that's what you get with Josh Jacobs. Um, I'm I'm with you. I would definitely take a running back number one, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with saying Josh Jacobs is uh, – is the guy um and no i'm not really if i guess if you were really 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 receiver needy i could see having you know maybe some some questions here but for the most part i want the running back and uh i'm down with 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 joshua as, as the first pick now some people um want to talk about you know well jalen richard could really i've seen this as a real thing could really you know impact the receiving volume of josh jacobs is there uh any any concern with that who 
Jalen no, Rashard. I know who Jalen Rashard is. <laughs> Jalen Rashard. Jalen Rashard is a good NFL running back. I think he's a solid pro. He's, he's a good NFL pass catcher. He's, he's a good change of pace. He's not a grinder. Um, and like you said, John Gruden likes a he likes a bell cow. Um, he had 81 targets last year and 68 catches. So, sure, that's so solid. Some, if you're right. gonna cite those stats and what he did, you know, sure, you could. It's, it's something that you could bring up if you didn't want if you wanted to make an argument against Jacobs, but I don't. I don't see it. Well, everything's there's context to everything. You got a, an offense that was falling apart, and they really only they traded away Amari Cooper. They only had Jared Cook, and they had a, a very skittish acting quarterback at the time. You know, Carr's been up and down in his career. He's, Offensive line was up and down. Only a couple of years ago, the team was 12 and 4, headed to the playoffs in week 17 or 16. He breaks his leg, but before that, he was an MVP candidate, and he was the next coming of the best quarterback in the NFL. And then last year, we've all seen the fourth down play where he threw the ball in the dirt. And it's like, well, you didn't even throw it up to give your receiver mm-hmm. a chance because you're about to get hit. So he's been through the ringer. It's been up and down. And maybe if when it's down, your satellite back's going to get some check downs because he wants the ball out of his hands. And the team had obviously given up on the offensive side of the ball for that year and defensively if you want to talk about letting your fit one of the best pass rushers in the league you know, get traded away for a first-round pick. A um, couple firsts. So, but the thing about it is, like you said, I mean, Gruden does want the grinder. Um, the biggest thing for me here was that they took him with a second first round pick instead of the third first round pick. And I was typing this up on Patreon right after the draft. Somebody asked a question about Jacobs. And that obviously, to me, it felt like instead of saying, okay, we got a first round, we got another first round pick, who's, who's out here, we, we could probably take this running back. It was like, we got two first-round picks left, but let's get this running back that we really want to bring in here and use his three-down skill set, and then we'll figure it out with our next third-round pick, mm-hmm. third, for our, our third first-round pick. Is the way I felt that that played out in my mind for the Raiders going ahead and making him the second first-round pick of theirs instead of the last one. Um, so I put a lot of I put some capital into their capital because they didn't have to do that. They're, they could have said, hey – we do like Jacobs and we do like Sanders potentially. And there's no chance all three of them go Mm -hmm. between this first round pick and our next next first round pick, but they didn't want to lose them to a team that might, you know, want to grab a first, you know, grab a a running back. So they took them and I like that. And Graham bar, I, I, I think it's pretty public knowledge now that I had a baby recently and this is the least amount of film watching I've done on the rookies. And I'm not going to pretend like I haven't, but I have been trying to catch up a ton. And my first stop was FF dynasty's rookie shows with you guys. And my second stop was the uh, the Patreon rookie shows with you guys. And then my third, fourth, and fifth stops were basically taking in anything I could anywhere else. And Graham Barfield says that Josh Jacobs was crushing it on his yards created and it's all this good stuff. And he's just got a ton of things that, that go in good for him. And for me, it is – you got to love I, – I love a 220-pound running back that can catch passes. And that was I was on me some late, you know, some Kalen Balaj last year, Balazs. and because he's a big dude that can catch passes, and this is a lot more complete yeah. running back that Absolutely. can catch, and he's two hundred twenty pounds, and he can catch passes. He's an every down player, exactly. So, and I I think he's he's stepping in. I know for a fact Casey could make a decent argument for David Montgomery, and I know that you could uh, you could. There's a lot of people that could make some some arguments that Miles Sanders might come out of here as being the best dynasty running back out of this class. But I think starting off going forward, I don't. It's hard to say that Josh Jacobs is gonna, is not going to have the best opportunity to yeah. to return on this one one pick. For sure. That value is going to yeah. be better off spent on Jacobs more than likely yeah. than anybody else. Yeah, that's why I'm not gonna. You know, I don't. I can't make too crazy of an argument. Um, I did. I have seen some. Jalen Rashard blowback uh, and some pass catching. Mm-hmm. Eighty one targets is a lot, but like you said, down down quite a bit. No offensive line help. You traded a, your best two players in the season. Receivers. Like what's going to happen? You right. traded Mari Cooper and Khalil Mack, the best but two players you had. They've since you know Colton Moore, I believe that's his name. He'll he'll get another year old. Um, they 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 brought in uh, Trent Brown um, from the patriots over there and they've 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 made strides towards improving the offensive line which is awesome for josh jacobs and the raiders and i i believe in Derek carr as an efficient as a good quarterback in the or at least an above average quarterback in the league able to get it done you you, you put a b on the field um you put uh tyrell williams stretching the defense and then you got your boy hunter Renfro over there uh running yeah. around in the slot so some good options um go tigers and then you know, on top of that, you lose Marshawn Lynch. Uh, 
Crowell goes down. Not that those guys would have been really taking anything from a first round running back necessarily, but they're all Crowell's out of the way. A good but runner. But uh, through uh, what Marshawn Lynch was doing last year through his six games, I mean, he saw twenty targets in those six games, catching fifteen of them, which isn't a ton. But if you're going to tell me that that pro rates to about forty, right? And and you would imagine there'd be a couple more for Josh Jacobs. So if you can tell me that Josh Jacobs can see four to five targets a game which I think they want to they don't want to really put Richard on the field unless they have to I think they kind of want to keep Jacobs on the field and not be able to tip your hand I'm sure he's a rookie and they'll give him a breather and Richard's not a bad player so you can put him out there but through Marshawn's first couple of games he had 11 attempts in the first game two targets 18 attempts in the second game two targets 19 against attempts in the third game four targets 20 attempts in the uh fourth game five targets nine attempts and then 13 attempts and two and five targets in those games so for the most part uh they, they were more than willing to to have uh Marshawn be a belt in a sort of a bell cow role and he was paying dividends for fantasy owners at that point especially because he was catching a right. couple of balls here and there and that's something that Marshawn typically you know wasn't really known for so you put a guy in there who's one of his big check marks is that he can catch passes and be the every down grinder. I think, you know, you're seeing a guy, if you're going to tell me that I can get 15, 16 to 20, 22 attempts and three to five targets a game with my one, one pick and you got a B on the field, um, holler at me. I'm, I'm in. I like it.